hello and welcome back to Data News After Week, the video where we go for all the little dribs and drabs of data news that we couldn't properly squeeze into any other videos. A quick short one this week because, to be frank, there has been a lot of data news, but a lot of these things are things we've covered in other videos. And everyone seems to be wildly obsessed with Black Friday. I know I'm sort of one of those people at the moment. But let's go through a, couple, a few stories this week. First and foremost... A new Synology. We've had a few little bits and bobs of information on this and I'm hoping we have a little bit more to go on within the next week or so. This is a new flash station series device, the FS2500. Now, the information we have comes from some online retailers that listed the item very briefly and then took it away. This is a 1U rack mount device, a 12 bay flash station series device, and it looks like from everything I've seen, from the pricing that's been made available and shown for the brief day or so that these pages were live before they were taken down, Right the way to, to the architecture itself, this is going to be a much more approachable and easy to jump onto the bandwagon version of the Flash Station series. For those that aren't aware, the previous generations FS 36 and 6400 devices, very, very impressive indeed, but incredibly expensive compared with other rack mount devices. This one, its retail price considerably low, and it looks like the architecture of a quad core. Um, it looks like AMD based processor in the Ryzen family, along with 8 gig of DDR4 memory by default and 10 GBE on board. This looks like it's definitely going to be a much easier jump into the world of Flash on Synology NAS there. But again, we're hoping to have more information on this very, very soon. So I just wanted to sprinkle this here into the news before we learn more about it. Next up, QNAT's operating system there, or the software and services QTS5. Finally, the ZFS platform, QUTS Hero, has now got their full version of it. They were dealing with beta for the two, three months since QTS5, available not in beta anymore, but full release. They've been enjoying it over there, and finally the ZFS players here have finally got hold of it. So again, that's got everything from the advantage of taking advantage of that M2 Coral from Google, the TPU, uh, taking advantage of free XFAT support there. Then you've got your WireGuard VPN support, increased responsiveness, increased security protocols there. And again, just a I would say clearer UI, they've even kind of reduced the size of some of those icons, which were kind of one of my big complaints there about it when I reviewed it on QTS 5. But still, nonetheless, if you are a QTS, uh, QUTS ZFS user, uh, then now finally you can jump onto QTS 5 there. And again, although a lot of you have a tendency to kind of hang back a little bit on operating systems, let's be honest, how many of you have actually jumped onto Windows 11 yet, even though it's available? Um, I think it, right now it's okay, and definitely some of the security advantages that it includes are worthy of note. Next up, kind of piggybacking off something I talked about earlier this week, Synology's 2022 event there. This is going to be their kind of big open day thing where they're going to talk a lot more about what they've done so far in the last year and where they hope they're going in the next 22 and beyond, as they call it. Um, but we've had a little bit, a little bit more information about the presentation there. Obviously, I've already talked about this. It should be linked in the description and a video I did earlier this week, but apparently it is going to be one main um, kind of promo video and overview of things that's going to be introduced there and then there's going to be a few uh, YouTube videos scattered throughout that day pretty much all live at once just like we saw in the 2021 event again bit of a shame that we're not seeing the live stuff as we've seen before but still at least now we've got a better understanding of what's going to happen and let's be realistic it's almost all going to be software they've been real hot on C2 in the last year so again I can see that being a large big a uh, large focus of that but don't be surprised if rack mounts stuff does come up as well and again that little flash station we talked about earlier if that's not on there i'm still hoping that's something we're going to be able to talk about very very soon and finally onto a subject that i have barely scratched on here on the channel because quite frankly i personally wasn't a huge fan of it but nft non-fungible tokens or fungible i know the pronunciation flies around there jeff huntley over there in the us has kind of done a thing where a number of us have heard of sites like the pirate bay has kind of put all that logic together and has basically released um, on their own website, NFT Bay, a 17 terabyte download there of pretty much all the existing NFTs that are in the blockchain. For those that aren't aware, NFT, uh, this is basically about owning digital. It's about digital ownership and the security that is linked to that ledger within the blockchain, linking to individuals owning a certain piece of a representative artwork. And that can be a modified version of it, but not the original artwork, but only that created image of it. Now, obviously... This uh, giant catalog of NFT images, as it stands, that 17 TB download there, and then across that site, and which is constantly growing, of course, um, this doesn't actually contain the original tokens. This is just 
the artwork. Now, I'm not endorsing this in any way. I'm definitely not someone that's going to say, oh, I really approve of all of this and the way this is going down. Like even blockchain and you know cryptocurrency and stuff like that, it started from a good place. And I think where it's going now is quite awful. Um, the way things are going right now, I might make a video on this because a number of you have kind of contacted me about NFT storage and utilizing devices, not just keeping it on the blockchain, but, you know, having that information, you know, within a locked place. Um, and I might entertain an idea of this about where NAS and DAS can sit within this more comfortably, more than just a general storage area. But the frank answer is I'm not a huge fan of this side of things, and I'm slightly reluctant to talk about it. But I'll let you guys poke me in the comments and tell me if you think this is something we should really talk about more on the channel. But this has been Data News of the Week. Again, click the bell and subscribe to be notified moving forward. Next week, it's going to be a smorgasbord of content. I've got a bunch of incredibly unique heat sink content coming. We've got the full coverage of Synology 2022. We've got the start of the new generation guide series where we have a myriad of guides uh, landing and hopefully the start of the best of the year videos as well and the articles where we talk about the things that we love the most and my recommendations for what you should go for in terms of your storage in terms of your hard drive your ssd and ultimately what's been the best of the year but otherwise i will see you next week